Hi, hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. How are you doing today? This is the second part of elbow leakage. Uh, before watching this video, I would recommend you to go through part one uh, to get more clarity. So in this video, I will mainly talk about how elbow leakage happens and uh, how does it introduce the unwanted DC component in the baseband signal. And finally, I will talk about uh, how is it uh, going to affect the baseband signal processing. So in the previous video, uh, I had missed uh, uh, some important details. So I will cover that uh, along with the basics and then I will move to the crux of it. So uh, in the previous video, uh, XP of D is the baseband signal which I had considered. Uh, uh, for sake of simplicity, I had considered it as a real. So this is the time domain and the frequency domain spectrum I had uh, mentioned. So to transmit this, we need a very huge antenna. So usually in our transmitter, we do up conversion. So for the time domain baseband signal, to do up conversion, we need to multiply with uh, this uh, complex exponential. So then uh, we see that uh, the baseband uh, uh, signal is shifted to center frequency FC in the frequency domain, right? But when we uh, do this uh, kind of operation, uh, we cannot write this in terms of, uh, we, we cannot implement uh, this in terms of circuitry, right? Because this is a complex quantity. For uh, real time practical systems uh, to design the circuit, we need uh, uh, the, uh, the real quantity. So, what if we take the uh, real, uh, real part of this? Then we get particular uh, uh, equation. So, this we can, uh, we could implement uh, uh, in terms of circuits. So, this is a part of half conversion, right? So finally, uh, after the output of this of conversion, uh, we are going to get this equation and this is what we want to transmit. So with this uh, design, um, with this uh, particular equation uh, implemented, can we get back uh, uh, our, our baseband signal by doing a down conversion? If we want to do that, then how does my down conversion um, circuitry should look like? So basically, if we consider the same uh, the exponential equation, then to do the down conversion, uh, if I multiply with this particular exponential, then what I can say these two gets cancelled, and we I would be in a position to get back my baseband signal, right? But uh, this up converted signal uh, we had implemented uh, uh, in this form in the transmitter. So in the receiver, let's say I will consider the real part of this exponential, which is cos omega ct. So if I do such a kind of operation, will I be able to get by XP of T? Yes, with the equations uh, we had shown in the previous video that we can get back XP of T. But this particular uh, is the output of just uh, the multiplier uh, at this point. But uh, after passing through low, low pass filter, uh, we can say that uh, uh, we would be in a position to get XB of T. All right. So, I want to show the equations which I had used in the previous uh, video. In the previous video, um, I missed out this uh, XP component at this part. So if we multiply cos omega ct cos omega ct, we will get 1 plus cos 2 omega ct by 2. So with this operation, so we are going to get signal like this and uh, XP of t uh, I missed uh, at this part. Um, so I had considered the scaling uh, uh, as 2 at the local oscillator, but we can shift this even at the local oscillator as well. So with this, uh, the spectrum would look like this. Mm, this particular part of the uh, spectrum was uh, missed uh, in the earlier video. So now I have added, but it doesn't matter because these are high frequency components that will be eliminated with low pass. With this, uh, I want to enter into the crux of the video that the first part is uh, how does the elbow leakage happen? So this is the receiver part and this is the uh, RF mixer. If you Google out, uh, to see a RF mixer, then you would get three port or four port or RF mixer, right? So let's say this is one port and this is another port. Between this port, there will be a, a strong isolation. But uh, ideally, I mean, in, in practice, uh, we cannot have very strong isolation. So because of which there will be some RF leakage happening. So whatever a signal present over here, that will enter uh, uh, here. And also between these two transmission lines. This is a transmission line. This is also a transmission line where our uh, RF signal travels. So between these two also, uh, due to some coupling, uh, there, will, there can be a leakage. If uh, there is no strong uh, shield or isolation between uh, uh, these two transmission lines. So basically, what does it mean? So whatever signal is here will get added to the incoming signal. The incoming signal here is, this is the one. So to this, uh, uh, the two cos 
omega ct gets added but there will be a different kind of attenuation or isolation uh, because of which i will write uh, some attenuation factor a so i have written uh, down uh, this particular equation over here uh, uh, okay uh, with this uh, we are entering into the uh, second point that is uh, how the unwanted dc is introduced in the baseband so this particular uh, signal will go through the multiplier first so uh, it will be multiplied with 2 cos omega ct which is generated by this local oscillator so this equation if you simplify we gonna get uh, the final equation like this so this is the output of the multiplier okay now uh, let us see the uh, spectrum of this if you see the spectrum uh, this is how it looks like at the dc we have uh, the unwanted dc uh, unwanted uh, component so at uh, 2 fc and minus 2 fc uh, we have uh, high frequency components uh, uh, which would look like this so if you clearly see with the low pass low pass filter we can eliminate these two things but uh, we will not be in a position to eliminate uh, this unwanted DC component uh, at the baseband. Uh, all right. So even if we try to eliminate, what happens? The information present at the DC will also be lost. So I think uh, it is clear. Now uh, we will enter into the third point, which is what are the effects of the baseband signal? To understand that, uh, usually we uh usually the rf impairments are analyzed with uh, the constellation diagram so for sake of simplicity i will take bpsk system so let's say this is a ideal constellation point okay this whenever we whenever a bit zero is transmitted we are going to transmit uh, uh, this and for bit one we're going to represent this okay. these two constellation points are of equidistance from the origin so that is when we say the dc is zero okay the moment if these two constellation points are shifted then dc is not equal to zero i will have to write xp of n xp of n plus uh, the dc okay so in this case uh, the dc component is uh, uh, what 2a so let's say a is equal to 1 by 4 then uh, it will, finally it will become xp of n plus uh, 1 by 2 which means uh, this will be shifted uh, to year and year so now you can clearly see that these two points are not uh, symmetrical uh, with respect to origin um, so that is when we said that the dc is not equal to zero if you take qpsk as well uh, if uh, these uh, four points are uh, ideal points where these are equidistant from the origin we uh, in the presence of dc uh, this would get shifted to uh, this particular uh, diagram so if we have such a kind of a constellation uh, diagram with uh, in the presence of dc then definitely there will be a lot of bit errors we, we are going to demodulate uh, wrongly so let us see that with uh, one example okay so let's say i have transmitted uh, uh, bit one so bit one means uh, uh, minus one comma zero right so the, re the received uh, signal will be this is the one received plus uh, let's say i will consider noise so let's say initially the dc is zero xp of n since this is the one which we are transmitting this is minus one plus let's say noise uh, for now i will consider uh, uh, three by four so plus three by four so this is what minus 0 0.25 so my sample would lie here so which is minus 0 0.25 comma zero so let us consider a simple demodulation scheme uh, you know where um, this is the decision boundary so i will say whenever uh, you know x at of b is greater than zero i will demodulate it as zero if it is less than zero i will demodulate it as one so in this case uh, what it would be demodulated so this is a negative quantity it would be demodulated to one right so the transmitted is one and the demodulated is one there is no error so far so good now what happens in case of uh, dc so let's say uh, dc uh, dc component uh, is one by two which we had considered right here so plus noise i considered three by four so transmitted is minus one uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, 1.25 
so you are going to get plus 0 0.25 so in the DC presence my sample would present uh, at this point which is plus 0 0.25 now if we consider the same uh, decoding strategy then uh, this is a positive quantity with positive quantity this is going to be decoded as 0 okay but what we transmitted is 1 but uh, we decoded it as 0 this is an error so that's how the errors are introduced with uh, uh, with the unwanted DC in the baseband. Okay, I hope uh, it is clear. Problem will be eliminated. So for that, uh, in the in the upcoming videos, we will consider OFDM systems, especially 4G. In 4G, we will see in the downlink and uplink how these uh, strategies are applied in order to eliminate uh, uh, this uh, uh, problem. All right. Please stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.